Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Well, friends, we have reached the end of the first month of the Year of Our Lord 2020, so January has come to a close. It has been a very eventful month for me. For those of you who are wondering, I did not get the kittens. They didn't approve me. I don't know what they're thinking. They're clearly crazy, but it all works out. It was clarifying to me in terms of the fact that I want two kittens instead of just one, and as soon as I get back from a little trip that I have to take, I'm gonna get hot on the pursuit, so there will be kittens coming into this house at some point, but they are not here yet. So there's that. I also have been having some health issues and I don't know what's going on, but I'm not feeling great. Hopefully I can keep my energy up here and they can figure out what in the world is happening with my body. I am to the point where I'm like, do I, do we need a human body anymore? Doesn't it kind of suck? Like, let's just, can't we move beyond this? I don't know. The joys of embodiment basically. But uh, anyway, all of that to say, I've had a lot of things going on. I've been very focused on reading because I was on a real roll with reading. It's definitely been winding down here at the end of January. So I'm expecting February won't be quite as heavy of a reading month, but I have to tell you, in terms of both volume and enjoyment, gotta be one of my best reading months on record. I read, I think, 34 books, which is crazy. My high for January ever, I think, was 52, so... Not my all-time high, but still, that's a shit ton of books. A lot of those were lighter things, and part of what I was doing was my Kindle Unlimited subscription. I knew I was going to be letting it lapse this month, so I was reading some smaller things from there. But yeah, it's a lot of books, and I also really was enjoying everything I read. So let's dive into some stats, and then we will talk about my hits, my surprises, and my disappointments for the month of January. As I said, I read 34 books in the month of January, with a total of 8,200 and 77 pages read. That is an average page count of 243 pages, which as you can see is uh, is quite low. Usually I'm closer to 300 pages per book, so I was reading a lot of short things. That's a part of how the volume was so high. Another way that I was getting through so many books was that I was listening to a lot of audio, so I was doing a lot of house cleaning and things like that, so I was having audiobooks going. So of the books that I read, 20-ish percent of them I read through audio to one degree or another. And I, like I was saying, because I was trying to make sure I was getting through some Kindle Unlimited things, only about 65% of what I read this month came from my TBR pile, which is unusual. I've been trying to be pretty good about having that be a higher percentage, but this month I had more from Kindle Unlimited or the library. The average age of books that I read uh, in the month was five and a half years, which again is quite a bit lower than what I typically like. And the average length of time that a book had been on my TBR was 325 days, so close to a year. Again, longer than I would like. I was reading a lot of front lists, and I do wonder if the average length of time on my TBR was weighted by the fact that I this month I did read the book that has been on my TBR for the longest. So there you go. A new stat I've started tracking is that uh, of my 34 books, I paid for 13 of them, and I paid an average of $7.66 per book. So that's a new thing I'm tracking. And then going to genre. So definitely the biggest uh, area of reading I had this month was romance. That doesn't surprise me given my focus on reading some Kindle Unlimited stuff. So I was reading several arcs this month, and I do have a lot of uh, romance arcs, fantasy arcs, and nonfiction. That tends to be sort of what I often request. So that was definitely my biggest single category. I did also read uh, quite a few mysteries quite a bit of sci-fi and fantasy, and then just sort of a smattering of everything else it looks like. And then in terms of my ratings, very strong. So I, my average rating was three and a half stars which is great. I had a couple of two, two and a half star books, but a lot of three, three and a half star. That seems to be a good concentration. I had 11 four star books, two 4.5 star books, and a five star book in the month of January, which is just a great way to kick off the year. In terms of how I do ratings, four and a half stars are favorites of the year, and a five star is an all-time favorite. That is a great foot to get the year started on. And then in terms of challenges, so I was doing the Get Shit Done readathon this month, and in that spirit, I was like, I'm gonna get going on all of my challenges. I wanna make some good progress. So I made a lot of progress on my challenges this month, or I at least got, got going on them. So I did officially fully catch up with the In Death series because I read the remaining novellas that I had. And then I also got the chance to read the arc of Golden In Death. So that was great. As I was mentioning, I read several arcs. So that's an ongoing kind of challenge thing that I work on. I do have a new challenge going. I don't think we have actually talked about 
out yet fully on the channel, but I am calling it my We Need Diverse Romance Challenge. And my big main month pick was The Suffragette Scandal, which I very much enjoyed by Courtney Milan. So that was the main pick for that one. And like I said, you'll be hearing more about that, I think, this coming week. So I made some progress there. I did read A Kiss of the Demon King by Cresley Cole, which is in the Immortals After Dark series. That is a series that I am trying to finish this year. So I read that book. I'm actually in progress on The Pleasures of a Dark Prince. That one I think I should be finishing up here in the next day or two. And then uh, I also read Ninja at First Sight by Penny Reed, which was a part of my finishing up that series challenge. I do have a sci-fi challenge going on this year that I'm not quite sure when you're gonna hear the full rundown about it, but at some point you'll hear more about it. But I read The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley for that, as well as To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. So I made some progress there. I did read The Assassin's Apprentice for a fantasy related challenge that you guys will be hearing about at some point. That's gonna be the refrain here. That's one of the things that I really wanted to do in 2020 is spend more time on bigger projects, which we'll talk about. I have a, a housekeeping kind of video coming out here in a couple of weeks, talking about kind of some of my channel goals and you know, just housekeeping items for our space here. But one of the things I'm wanting to do is like bigger reading projects. So I have a lot of challenges going. So there you go. But so this was a part of a fantasy challenge. I did read Loving by Henry Green. So that was from my 12 classics I want to read in 2020 list. Last but not least, I did read Johannes Cabal and the Fear Institute from my 20 books I want to read in 2020. I did not quite finish The Diving Bells this month, but I am close. So that was going to be the second one. We're almost there. Not quite. And I think that's all of the challenges. Lord, that is going to be so fun trying to keep up with. You could just see all the spreadsheet action happening to like track all this, the mind reels. So with that, let's go ahead and dive. Let's start with my disappointments because like I said, this was mostly a pretty strong reading month. So I don't have a ton of disappointments. So let's go ahead and start with that piece. Yeah, only three things I wanted to call out. So definitely my big, like my worst rated book and my biggest disappointment was Unspeakable by Laura Griffin. So Tracers is a series that I'm informally catching up with this year. It's sort of like whenever I get in the mood for that kind of lighter suspense book. I'm I'm trying to make myself read that. We'll talk about a different book in that series in terms of hits because there was one that I read that I really enjoyed. But Unspeakable, I just really didn't like. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've ever read, but I found the main dude so insufferable. You meet him in the previous book and he's such an asshat in that book. He continues to be an asshat here. There's so much just like misogyny in this book. And I know that it's meant to be sort of a point, like it's, it's part of thematically what's happening, but like, there's just not enough done with it to make it pleasant. It, you don't have like a moment of triumph over it that makes it worth it to me. It just feels sort of like, you know in Silence of the Lambs where Clarice is getting patronized by all those like local yokel top kind of things? It's that for a whole book and I just didn't like it. So that one, the, I mean the mystery was like solid enough. That piece worked for me which kept me from just like hating it. But anything having to do with the characters, I just didn't end up really enjoying. So that was definitely my most disappointing book. I also was disappointed by the the Legend of Jane by Jessica Clare. It's a novella and I don't know, I'm kind of coming to the realization that maybe Jessica Clare and I, like we had a peak moment and I don't know, like it's just been a while since I've read a book from her that I just love and that, that just kind of makes me sad. So really that was a disappointment of just like, maybe, maybe there was like this period of time, there was like two or three series. Well, I mean, it's not even just two or three. She had like four or five series I really liked, but I just, it's just been a while since I've liked anything from her that much. I mean, like they've all been good or fine, but they just haven't been great. I don't know, I'm sad. It's a bummer. Anyway, moving on from that, I don't wanna think about that. So The Legend of Jane was disappointing. This was also very disappointing. So this is fine. This is Johannes Cabal and the Fear Institute. It's funny. It's very whimsical, fantastical, like crazy shit happens in these books. I love like the sort of casualness with the crazy shit that happens. And it's not that this was bad. I gave this three stars. I just, I think, I realized, I mentioned this in a different video, but I think I am just chasing the high of Johannes Cabal the detective. And I just don't know that I'm ever gonna achieve that. Like, I think that maybe our day in the sun has ended. So I have two more books in the series and I'll read them, but it's not that much of a priority to me. And I think I've decided that I'm not gonna keep the books in this series that I don't love. And so far the only one that I've loved is Johannes Cabal the detective. So I guess I'm just bummed because I think I was hoping that this was gonna be a series where I I just, it was a favorite series and that's just not really materializing. And it's more that I just really love a specific book in the series, which is fine, but kind of just disappointing. 
Surprise time. So first of all, Come Tumbling Down by Shauna McGuire. I read this, I got this as an ARC and then I've been pre-ordering these books. I think the reason this was a surprise or something I wanted to call out is that I think that this is the book that helps me like bring my thoughts full circle on the Wayward Children series. So I gave this four stars and I really enjoyed this. Like I would recommend it. I definitely vastly preferred this over last year's release, which was In an Absent Dream, as well as very much over Beneath the Sugar Sky. Like this is the first time that I've been like really like deeply invested in this series in a couple of books. And here's why, it's Jack. I just love Jack. <laughs> That's basically what I've realized. So I love the character of Jack. I love everything happening with her and her one true love. Like that I'm into. I'm into her world where she's the monster. I'm into all of that. This book also features all of the characters from the earlier books that I like best. Like we've got Christopher, we've got, is her name Cora? Yeah, her, I want them to get together. I don't think that's gonna happen, but I like them. We've got Cade, who is fantastic. We've got Jack, like all, like that's who I like spending time with in these books. And I think what I, this is like concretized for me is that I'm just not gonna read books in this series anymore that don't have one of those characters as like the main deal, because that's what I like. That's what I'm most interested in. So that was very clarifying. And all that to say, I really enjoyed this. I really like spending time with Jack. I do think this has some pacing issues. I don't think it's the best book in the series. And you know, if I were gonna tell you you. My favorite bit of this series is the back half of Down Among the Sticks and Bones. I don't like the beginning part in our world, but when they go, when Jack and Jill go to their world, that is like the highlight of the entire series for me so far. So I did really like being back in that world and like the whole drama of it all. So all that to say, this was definitely like, I enjoyed this. I gave this four stars. It's a hit. And I guess it's just a surprise for me in the sense of like, okay, I can finally really put language to what does and doesn't work for me in this series. Then, two surprises from Kindle Unlimited or the library? I forget where. Two very light romances that I enjoyed and I put them as surprises because they were recommended to me on the Faded Mates podcast, which I mentioned in my mid-month check-in, how much I have been binging that and enjoying it. And one thing that I just wanna shout out is that they do give me a lot of recommendations of romances with some kind of unique or interesting thing about them. Now, in both of these cases, I gave both of these books three stars. His Until Midnight by Reese Ryan, I think that's her name. Ryan Reese, Reese Ryan and then Write by Jana Astor. I gave both three stars because both of them had something about them that I didn't love and I can't really get into what they were because that would be spoilers, but I appreciated that both of them I felt like did something a little bit different. So His Until Midnight is a friends to lovers romance and I liked that it was a really condensed timeline and the way the pacing or sort of like the beats of the story went were just a little bit different than what you often get in that trope. So I appreciated that and I think it, this is a category romance and I feel like this was a good example of a good category romance. So I liked that. And then Right by Jana Astor, I just thought was a fun premise, which is there's this girl and she has been convinced since she was a little girl that her brother's best friend is Mr. Right for her. And it's a book basically about how she, it's just told in a really interesting way, like the way the there's a cut back and forth in time for the first 25% of the book that's just sort of going to, when she's a little girl to the present in a way that I thought was structurally interesting and was effective. It was, a, to my mind, a good use or a good example of using a dual timeline. And I liked that it didn't stay that way for the whole book. And basically it's a book about how when she eventually meets this guy's brother, he's like, oh no, I'm the one you're supposed to be with. Like I'm on it. And he is very much here in pursuit. And this would have probably been like a four star book for me, but it had a thing that got added in that just drives me crazy. I will say that the Faded Mates podcast, I've now read a few of their recommendations and this happens in several of them. So it's clearly something they like that I do not like. So that's just a matter of taste, but I would have probably given this four stars had that not been in there. But I just thought it was like a different surprising take on a contemporary romance. So just surprises for both of those. Speaking of a romance that got four stars from me, When She's Married by Ruby Dixon. So Ruby Dixon, I am dying to figure out who Ruby Dixon is because apparently Ruby Dixon is a pen name for a romance author who writes more traditionally published books, 
and I don't know who it is, and I would love to read their more traditionally published books because I actually really like the series of sci-fi romance or like speculative romance books that they do. One of their books made my uh, best romances of 2019 list, and this one, I was I was genuinely moved by this book. And the setup of this world is basically that humans are a grade D or whatever class of species in the universe. And usually they are basically treated like property. They're like enslaved and they are treated sort of as like a sexual novelty. So it is very dangerous to be a human not on earth in this world. Like if you get kidnapped and like black market traded, it's bad. So there's a group of, of human women who have found refuge on this planet because the ruler of this planet is married to a human woman and so he has granted amnesty to human women to basically like help colonize this planet. So they all have like these farms and that being said it's still sort of like the wild wild west. It's a very dangerous world. It's sort of on the fringes of the galaxy. That's how he like gets away with doing this and they are still in a lot of danger. The planet is vastly populated by males and a lot of them are being sort of like forced into marrying these males so that the males can get their hands on on their land and some of them are killed or some of them are treated terribly. So it's still like a very dangerous situation. I do think this is a plot hole in this world because if that's the setup, like the Lord of the planet has come in sort of deus ex machina style at least once before and been like saving the human woman. So like, why can't he just make the penalty for trying to do this to a human woman? Just really, I don't know, that's a plot hole. But all that to say, so we've had several books of marriages of convenience happening in this world. And of course it's a romance, like they have a marriage of convenience and then they end up falling in love or whatever, but I like that this is a book that confronts how dark of a setup that really is and is actually like grappling with the emotional reality of that, of these women just, they're far away from earth. They have been ripped away like illegally from, from earth. They have been, many of them, horribly abused and treated over the years. And now they finally found some semblance of a life maybe they can have without it being just constantly terrible for them. And they, and they still have people trying to intimidate them and trying to abuse them all over again. And so the main character in this, Piper, I really thought was an interesting character because she is very aware of how limited her choices are. She has been horribly assaulted and abused and she has, you know, developed coping mechanisms with that. And she is just very much in the mindset of like, I have so little control. There is only one thing that I do have some agency over in and that is doing what I have to do to be able to keep my farm on my terms. And I just really found her a very compelling character. Character. I think the romance was a little lackluster. I don't know that the hero was that strong. He has his own motivations and you know, it's a short book so it, it doesn't get fully fleshed out. But I just thought I really appreciated a book that it made me cry a couple of times. I felt like that was a genuinely well-drawn character and I felt for her and I was very invested in her finally having some semblance of control over her life. So that surprised me because of how much it genuinely moved me. And then my final surprise is Loving by Henry Green. So my classics pick of the month, which I ended up giving four stars. And I really ended up enjoying this. The reason I put this as a surprise is because I'm just very surprised of the fact that this ended up being really a stream of consciousness novel, which was not what I was expecting. I don't really know. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. And I loved it. Like it's one of my favorite stream of consciousness novels I've ever read. I love that in that kind of book, really what you're reading for is to sort of just be swept away in the experience of it. Like the whole point is for me, it's a book that I really just allow myself to be fully in the moment for. So I don't spend a lot of time wondering, thinking about what has happened in it or even where it's going. I just sort of get swept up in it. And I just, I liked that as an experience. The setup of this is that this is uh, during World War II. It is very much, if you like the sort of upstairs downstairs element or sort of the servants part of Downton Abbey, it's got that vibe to it. So we're following mostly the servants of this Irish castle, which is populated occasionally by the uh, English aristocracy who own it. it we kind of kick off the book with the previous butler or the reigning butler dying and a new butler taking over his responsibilities and just sort of how that sets the household in a little bit of turmoil or just a time of transition. And, you know, there's a lot of petty grievances. There's gossip, there's love 
love, there's stealing, like there's all these little things happening in this household, all against the sort of ominous backdrop of World War II happening sort of off in the distance, also some stuff with the IRA. So yeah, I mean, it, it's a really, it's just an interesting book. Like I, I just, didn't, I don't know that I have a lot of super articulate things to say about it. Uh, I mean, we could totally do a full class analysis of this. And I think thinking about this and its historical milieu is certainly could be quite interesting, but I don't really want to do that with this book. I just liked it. Like I enjoyed my time with it. I think if you don't like a book that is almost purely dialogue, you will not like this. And I don't know that it's super action driven, but it does have more action than some stream of consciousness things I've read. So do with that what you will. Yeah, I just, I was surprised at how much I ended up enjoying this and that it was so not what I thought I was getting, but it was definitely a, a really good first classic read of the year. Oh, sorry. I actually did have one other surprise. So I did get to read A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane early. <sighs> it's just so good to be back with Mel Jean Brooks slash Mila Vane. I hope that this portends her fully being back in the publishing mix. I just really enjoyed this. I, I think the reason I wanted to put this as a surprise was that it was very much more a fantasy than I was expecting because it's a barbarian fantasy romance kind of deal. And I think the world building, like it, it read very much as fantasy forward. I guess that's what I wanted to say about it as a surprise. There's definitely a strong relationship element, but this is definitely one I would recommend to people people who are fantasy readers who are interested in specifically reading some fantasy romance. I think that this could be a good choice for you because it definitely has a very high emphasis on the world building and the politics and all of that. I found the main guy real tough in terms of the relationship, but the main female lead was awesome. Her name was Eve Even? Y Even? She was the opposite of like the t like kick-ass heroine and I liked that. Like she was physically actually quite weak, but she was so clever and then just her like fortitude, like her moral strength was so there. She's like physically weak, but she is the most strong character in it. And I really liked that, but I don't know. The relationship between them ugh, didn't totally work for me, but I feel like that this was a book that's really like gearing up for the full series. So I'm very excited to read more books in this world. World. Like I'm very much looking forward to the next one. And I still gave this one four stars or three, three and a half stars. I think I ended up on three and a half stars on this. I, I did still enjoy it. It just didn't fully come together for me, but I'm really intrigued and excited about the rest of the series. And I really like, this is in the same world. That was the other surprise. I didn't realize this. It's in the same world as her novella, The Beast of Blackmore. And so there's just a lot going on in these, in this world. And I think there's a lot of potential for different storylines in terms of there's different kingdoms involved and different sort of like conflicts and players sort of set up on the chessboard now. So now I'm looking forward to watching this game of chess now that everything has sort of been put in place. Okay, and now we come to hits. Oh boy, guys, we definitely had hits this month. So first of all, Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I gave this four stars. This is the first book in the first trilogy in her Elder series? Is that what it's called? I don't know. No, this is the Farseer trilogy. So this is the first book in that. I don't remember what the overall series is called, but anyway, this is so good and so charming and very nostalgic for me. I can totally see why this is beloved because there's something very cozy about this book. And I very much enjoyed that quality of it. It reminded, I think I said this in my mid-month check-in, this reminds me so much of Tamora Pierce and those kinds of vibes where it's very character driven. It's not necessarily that interesting of a world, at least of what I've seen of it so far. So that's not really the main event. It's very much like ye oldy medieval fantasy kind of thing, but it, it's so character driven. And I love the characters like Fitz, is just a little marshmallow who I love. Fitz Chivalry Farseer. I just love, I love him. He's, he, I mean, and it's hard not to love him because he's so ill-treated often in these books and you can't help but sympathize with him. Actually, the sort of pacing of this book reminds me of the first part of Jane Eyre in a lot of ways where you see him coming of age and he has this legacy that is both sort of a blessing and a curse and he is not treated well by the people around him. And he's having to sort of figure out how to carve out a place for himself in the 
limits to the fact that he, like by virtue of who he is, has some cards stacked for him and against him. So I really like that. I really love some of the other characters that are happening in here, particularly I find Burke a very compelling character. There's a lot of interesting discussion or sort of like inferences about class and duty through that character that I very much enjoyed. There are dog, like, so one of the things that Fitz can do is he has a wit where he can speak to animals and there are two dogs that are prominently featured in this book that also broke my little heart. Uh, so uh, there's just a lot happening. And then there is action that definitely picks up at the end of this book. So this very much reads sort of like the the ramp up to what's really going to happen in this series. And I can see why pacing wise, that would be a problem for people. And it was somewhat a problem for me. Like there's a reason why this wasn't something I just love. And that's probably part of it is that I do think that it feels a little back heavy. But once you like once we really are getting into things and he you know, is fully in the assassins apprenticing mode. Yeah, I'm definitely super interested to see where the series goes. I believe I've got the next two books on order, so they should be coming. So I will definitely continue in this series, and this was definitely a really fun fantasy classic I, that I had a, a very good experience with. If you're looking for character-driven fantasy that just has really nice prose and is very cozy, this is exactly what you need. Another hit for me was Untraceable by Laura Griffin. So I mentioned Unspeakable as sort of a disappointment. Untraceable by Laura Griffin was really, really good. It was exactly what I like in terms of sort of balancing a romantic element with a mystery element. I like that it was very slow burn. That wasn't, you know, it, there was no like danger boner in this basically. It was a little, considering that it was written, I think in like the late aughts, it reads very 90s. Like for some reason, I constantly felt like there was like a very jazz saxophone happening in the background of a lot of this book. I don't know why, but <laughs> it just felt kind of 90s. Not in a way that I was mad at. So there's something sort of retro about it that ended up working for me. And I actually quite liked the mystery. I liked the way it unfolded and I kind of liked the way that it came full circle. So it was just a really fun romantic suspense kind of book that worked for me basically. So that was definitely a hit and very much a contrast to Unspeakable. I'm in the middle of Snapped right now and that one I'm not liking as much either. I'm wondering if I got to get later in the series to really get back to where I'm super liking them because I love like Touch of Red was really good. Stone Cold Heart was really good. I don't know. Maybe Maybe it just takes a while to get more in the groove of what I like. I also read and very much enjoyed uh, What's Your Pronoun by Dennis Barron. I think that was the author. And this is basically a very nerdy history of the fact that in the English language, we do not have a gender neutral personal singular pronoun. And how basically this has been referred to as a missing word in English for hundreds of years. So with the rise of, so he's basically looking at with the rise of feminism and then with trans rights activism. In the last like 100, 150 years, there's been sort of like a, politi a political element of this missing word. And he really, it's just a super interesting, very niche history, which is something that I quite like. And he's really exploring like, okay, so how have we talked about using feminine pronouns in the past? And, and when we use he as a generic plural in a law, for instance, how did that come up during women looking for, during the quest for equal rights for women, because they would say, okay, so in this law, when you say he, it's generic, like women cannot steal, even if it is referred to as he in the law. But then when you come to the voting, then it is specifically male, like then it is only men and just talking about like the inconsistencies there. And, and so that was very fascinating. And then talking about, you know, all of the myriad of, you know, invented pronouns, etc. I think some of the most interesting parts are at the very end of the book where he goes back and talks about how even at the very beginning of old Old English, there wasn't a feminine singular pronoun or a plural one. And so how she and they were imported from different languages because English speakers realized they were missing words. And really what this ends up being is an argument of functionally, English speakers have been using they as a singular for hundreds of years. Shakespeare did it, Jane Austen did it, plenty of people in the English and like English letters have been using they singularly because it is a missing word. And we're always looking for a word to use in that capacity. So like, instead of fighting this, 
I think this is really a, a historical argument of why we, people should just give up on that. Pedants should leave that in the past. Aside from the political elements of this, they is just a very useful word in English that we should just be comfortable with using in a singular way. So anyway, I just thought it was a very interesting and very nerdy history and a good example of what that kind of very specific niche history can do. So those were all four star hits. Now we come into 4.5 and five star territory. So a surprise hit for me, one that I picked because of this challenge I'm doing and I wasn't sure what my response to it would be. I was hoping that I would like it, obviously, but I just wasn't sure because it's just not the kind of sci-fi I normally read or seek out, but I'd heard good things about it and it fit the challenge. So I read The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley and I gave this four and a half stars and I absolutely loved it. The only thing that kept me from giving this five stars is that I do think that the ending is, is mm, it doesn't totally sell me on it. And I do think while I love the thematic content of this, I do think it's too explicitly sell, spelled out at some points in a way that I just thought was too pat or on the nose. But I loved this. This is like a space military thing, but it actually ends up being much more a time traveling kind of sci-fi, which I would have told you is not necessarily something I love, but I really loved this. This was very character driven, which I very much enjoyed. I love the character of Dietz, who is our main character, as well as all of the people that serving alongside of military operation. The premise of this is basically that the earth has become, well, okay, here's the thing. This is a very disorienting book and I don't know how much I really want to tell you about it because that's part of what I think is enjoyable about it is the purposeful disorientation by the author to the reader and if you watch me you know that that is something I love like I love it when an author can successfully keep me confused in a way that is meant to be confusing and I feel confident that they're in control still this book has that quality and I really liked it because it's got a lot of time travel that's basically why but also the way that the world building is done it isn't just like dumped out to you. You kind of like get bits and pieces of it over time. So I guess what I want to tell you is that this is basically about a space war between Earth and Mars, kind of, not totally. And we learn more about that as things go on. And the idea of the light brigade. So basically the major innovation in this war is that Earth has figured out how to like teleport its soldiers to places by breaking them down into units of light and then like reassembling them. And so that's how the military people in this book are transported from one place to another. And sometimes things go wrong when they do that. And also there's not a lot of insight into sort of the long-term effects of doing that on soldiers. Anyway, I just love this and I don't want to tell you much more about it. I just want to tell you that the writing is beautiful. Like I think that this is really lovely quality of prose. And I will also say that this is dark as fuck. Like this is a really grim, dark version of a sci-fi. So like, this is not like the Star Trek optimistic vision of the future. This is pretty dark. So uh, yeah, all of the things, if I were going to list them out, a lot of these would be things I would tell you are not necessarily my favorite, but like they work for me in this book. I just love this. I thought this was absolutely fantastic. Four and a half stars for me, one of my favorites of the year already. My other four and a half star was Undercover Bromance by Lissa K. Adams, which is a contemporary romance. And you guys, this book was the first book I read in 2020 and it just got me energized for the year. I just love this. Now I can tell, I think I mentioned this in my mid-month check-in. There are gonna be people who do not like this book because they do not like the heroine. The reason that they're not gonna like her is because she makes mistakes and she's very unapologetic about going for things that she wants. And she has a very strong sense of right and wrong, sometimes not taking into account how other people feel. Like basically she's a flawed character who is very, like not a shy retreating whatever and I've already read some of the reviews and I'm like if this was true of the hero you would have no problem with it so like I, I'm not saying that all people who dislike her have misogyny or internalized misogyny but I think in general the fact that in romance books this kind of female character is more harshly criticized than her male equivalent I do think is a misogynistic element of readers responses to these characters 
I love that she was flawed because the whole point of this book, so I should back up. The setup of this book is it's a sequel to the Bromance Book Club. So in the Bromance Book Club, the whole the whole setup is that there is this uh, romance book club of dudes who read romance novels to help them like save their marriages or learn how to like talk to women or whatever. They bro out reading romance novels basically. And you know, it's like businessmen and athletes and whatever. And it's set in Nashville, which is where I live. So that's exciting too. They have this book club. And in the first one, there was like a a historical romance they were reading and it was a lot about like wooing and like a second chance in a marriage trope or whatever so like that was sort of the vibe of the whole thing in this one they are reading a romantic suspense so this is more of a meta commentary on a, a romantic suspense trope and the mystery mysterious element or the suspensey element of this is that there is a restaurant owner in town who basically in the opening pages we learn is a sexual predator and the heroine was a chef working for him. She walks in on him assaulting one of her co-workers, tries to stand up for her co-worker in the moment and the co-worker is sort of like cowed out of saying something and so she is fired and basically the hero was part of the heroine being put in that situation and he finds out he feels awful, he's trying to make it right and so together eventually they are going to work to try to bring this man down. So and then and then also all of their friends in the book club and around the book club get involved. So that as a setup is like a high that's a lot and that's a high challenge to set oneself and I just think she did it well I think the only the reason I don't have this as a five star is because I do think that there are some pacing issues in this like I it takes too long for the that main couple to start really working together to try to get to the bottom of things once that happened though I thought it was really well done all of the side characters are fantastic but what I loved about this they have parallel character growth journeys they're going on because our main heroine is is so like feisty and she is just like I am not gonna stand for this like this guy cannot get away with this I'm not gonna let him do this to women which is great it's awesome but she's not listening to the women that he has hurt she is so focused on her vision of what it means to like bring him to justice or whatever that she's not listening to women and therefore she's not being a good ally to these women who have been impacted and I just thought that was such a smart character growth journey to give to the female person in this dynamic and not to the man because he also is also about growing and his ability to be an ally to her and to these women so like he's going on that journey too but he specifically is needing to learn a specific woman in a who he is in a relationship with about what she needs from him not just what he thinks she wants to hear or thinks she wants from him so I just thought that that was so smart in terms of how she built her characters and I just had such a good time reading this it's dark like I mean, as you can tell from the description of this, content warnings, like there's just dis discussions about awful things. But I think that those things are handled well for the most part. And yeah, I just love this. I thought that this was a real send up of some of the misogynistic tropes that are baked into romantic suspense. Like I enjoyed her calling that out. I thought the meta elements of this worked really well. It's funny, like I laugh throughout a lot of this book. I also think it's interesting that this is a book where there are more, like in this series in general, there are more of the women who I'm excited excited to see side books for. So like he goes on a date with a woman, uh, the, the hero goes on, I don't remember the names of any of these people, I just realized, whatever. He, the main guy <laughs> goes on goes on a date with a woman at the beginning of this book. And he, and I loved her. Like I love the way she treated their situation and how she comes back a little bit later. And I would love to see her get a book. He has an assistant who I would love to see, see be the heroine of a book. I do love the Russian who is in the bromance book club. Like he's great. Also, if he eats cheese, apparently his, you know, flatulence is enough to kill a grown man. So I just like I love all the character work in this and I just loved how this was deconstructing this genre. I just thought it was great. I can see that there are going to be people who do not like this book. I can tell that. I loved it. It really worked for me and I just thought is it perfect? No, but I thought that it was a really good version of what it was trying to do and I thought it had interesting things to say about the genre and about the themes it was trying to tackle. And then we come to my five star pick and who boy, are we talking about female rage? Yes, we are. And this book, that's just what it's about. I mean, Undercover Bromance, I think that's some, some of the subtext. 
This is the text. Jane Doe by Victoria Helen Stone. This got so much attention when it was released in 2018 from certain blogs that I was reading and I knew that I wanted to get to it eventually. The way people were talking about this, I was like, huh, I could see a world where I love this book. So like I put it as a, a stretch on my five star prediction list last year. I was like, I could see maybe this being something I absolutely loved. Yes. Turns out it's not a stretch at all because I fucking love this book. This is about, it's hard to talk about because I don't want to spoil it. It's a book you have to experience, I think, basically, but it's, I guess, a mystery. I really think that this is more just like general fiction with a mystery plot in it or like a thriller engine in it because really this is a character study. Jane Doe is a sociopath and she experiences her sociopathy more as sort of like neural diversity rather than something she moralizes is about, which I think was a strong choice. She, and she really only has had one person in her life who she has loved. And it was her best friend who she had in college who just accepted her, got her and gave her that human connection that she basically is unable to experience really with anyone else. Jane is a incredibly successful like international trade lawyer and her friend was in this abusive relationship. It didn't end well. And so basically this is a book about Jane coming back to enact revenge on behalf of her friend. And because she is a sociopath, she feels no shame and she feels no guilt and she feels no like compunction about doing what is necessary to enact this revenge. And when I tell you that this book is so satisfying and has so many, like it's, if you're just looking for like a pure revenge plot where you can just vicariously enjoy someone just like ruthlessly dismantling someone else, here you go. It just has so many moments where you're like, yes, I shouldn't be cheering for this, but I am. I love, because she is so, there's so much just smart commentary in this because she doesn't have like this emotional connection to other people and also to like gender roles or what's expected of her from other people. She just has this detached ability to exploit what other people are expecting from her in every situation. And her commentary about that while she's doing it is so smart, interesting. I underlined the shit out of this book, just loved it. And it's also funny, like she is so funny. I laughed out loud so many times in this. The ending little vignette made me laugh out loud so hard. And I just love spending time with her in her head plotting what she's gonna do. I loved this book. It was so good. And it's not that long. Like it's easy for me to recommend to people because it's like a pretty short read. I think it's worth trying. It's also free on Kindle Unlimited, I think, or free on Prime Reading. Like you can read this for free through Amazon. And it's just fantastic. I also read this month the art because I didn't realize that this was gonna be a series, but I went, when I was doing it on Goodreads, it said number one of whatever. And I was like, ooh, there's another one. Yes, turns out in March, there will be a sequel to this book called Problem Child. And I read that arc. I gave that arc four stars. I didn't like it. I didn't like it as much as this one, just period. It was interesting. I think you get, it's a story basically more about kind of where Jane comes from and some of her backstory. And I think, I think it's her trying to figure out what love really is like, and that's a theme in this one too, but I think even more so in the next one of like, is love an emotion or is love an action? kind of. And so I think that's interesting. I just, the next one doesn't have nearly as much of her planning to take someone down. It has one storyline of that. And that was by far my favorite part as well as um, one other relationship thing happening. But really, I think Jane is at her best when she is like plotting to destroy people. So I wish that it had been more about that. And uh, if there's a third one, I would love to see her figuring out how to destroy someone again, because that's really when I love her best. But this was fantastic. A surprise kind of, two of my big hits this month. I wasn't expecting to love as much as I did, but yeah, I did. Fucking loved it. Recommended. First five-star book of the year. Hopefully good portend of things to come. Okay, so that was me wrapping up January 2020 reading. It was a good month. Hopefully we can keep the same energy for the rest of the year. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, let me know how your month of reading went in January. If you love things, if you hated them, let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that that will do it for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.